All right, we're up. Noah Ponte, welcome to the podcast, man. How are you? Thank you. Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's uh, it's been it's been a while that I've wanted to talk to you, so I'm glad we're getting this chance. Where where are you right now? I'm sitting so at my desk in my bedroom, actually. So I'm at home in Switzerland. You live in Switzerland, right? Yeah. So, what well, what part of Switzerland do you live in? I live in the Italian part, so so South Switzerland, basically, very close to Italy. Wow. Okay. Now, now you're telling me that um, back a few generations, your grandparents um, immigrated to Switzerland, right? And from from Italy. Yeah, my grandparents from my uh, dad's side, mm -hmm. so they immigrated to Switzerland. But yeah, they used to live like 50 minutes from where I live now. So it was wow. on the same lake, but on the Italian part. Wow. Okay. I'm always fascinated with uh, Europeans because you guys speak so many languages. How many languages do you speak? So first language is Italian. Then I speak English and German pretty well. And uh, French, I understand it. Reading, it's, it's better than, than German. But then speaking, I lost it a little bit. So I can have a, uh, have a conversation, but not a real really good conversation in what about swiss <laughs> so there is no swiss there is swiss german and okay. that's basically a dialect like, okay. and then we have the dialects in italian so yeah but there isn't a language that we all speak so oh, really? if, if i have to communicate with a, a swiss guy that lives in german part i i have either to speak german or english same for the french part we speak either french or english or so wow yeah that's that's wild that's crazy yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> where do you feel where do you feel most uncomfortable i guess probably english uh french oh french you feel uncomfortable yeah. there yeah so that's the first language i learned but then so i started speaking more german uh thanks to the national team and English, same, thanks to the national team and like traveling and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stopped uh, speaking French, basically. Yeah. So I can still, but it, it takes me a bit more, of the, uh, be more time to speak it. Now, have you had anyone from the Italian side ever reach out to you and say, we would like for you to swim for Italy? <laughs> I mean, yes. So. <laughs> a lot of fans or so uh especially they talk they call they talk about the four by one 100 mix uh mixed mm -hmm. so medley so not mixed medley and um, because yeah they tell me you can't come you could come to italy to stream the the uh, hundred fly in the in the relay and stuff but i mean that's not one of my plans for the future future for now so I'm Swiss. I'm proud. I'm a proud Swiss. So for now, everything is going well here. So there, there is no, no need to change for me. Yeah, Swiss. So, no, from what I read about you, you've always had a natural um, affiliation with the water. You've always felt good in the water. You felt natural. You've had a natural feel from a young age. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. It is. So. I've always been better in the water than out of the out of the out of the water, especially in sports. And yeah, since I was two years, two and a half years old, I started swimming without any, how do you say, uh, help. Mm -hmm. And in the in our swimming pool at home, and then with with at six years old, I started doing a competitive swimming, mm -hmm. and I never stopped since. And yeah, uh, every time I try to do another sport, like out of, out of the water, like playing football, uh, European football um, and stuff, I always break something or get injured because I'm not really uh, able to do so. But I think that's uh, many swimmers uh, problem. Yeah. Now, growing up in Switzerland, I mean, s swimming is part of Kind of the culture you know you, people in switzerland swim for sure but i'm not sure whether that's one of the big sports in switzerland in australia it is you know we grew up everybody swims swimming's a big yeah. deal 
but we have uh, cricket, we have rugby, we have um, you know many different sports that they don't necessarily play all over the world. Uh, what are some of the big sports in Switzerland that maybe you've tried when you were younger? Skiing, alpine skiing. Skiing. That's the main sport, I would say. Then ice hockey. And um, yeah, I used to ski when I was uh, younger. Then mm -hmm. I did, so I didn't have time anymore to go skiing and stuff. And it, yeah, it is quite so not dangerous because yeah, but it is more dangerous than swimming for sure. And so I don't really want to get injured in this. So yeah, in this part of my life because I'm swimming and it, if I break my leg, then. <laughs> then it takes it takes a while to get back and uh, yeah so but yeah the main sports are skiing yeah ice hockey mountain bike maybe uh, mountain bike nino Schurter. yeah exactly yeah you know him he just won the uh world, world champs for he the just won time. the he just won the world championships for the 10th time yeah if you don't if, if you don't know who nino Schurter is out there everybody listening i mean go on go and check this guy out he's a He's a superstar, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the biggest star is uh, Federer, for sure, in mm. Switzerland, I would say. Right. Uh, yes. Right. Federer. Federer is still playing? He is. So he hasn't retired yet. So mm. they're going to do the Labor Cup, I think, next month or so. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, yeah. Now, listen, man, uh, what about you? So I, I read on your biography you had always dreamed – of swimming in America and then I see this situation where you come to America and then very quickly you turn around and go back is was that for, for personal reasons or was it just not the right fit for you I mean yeah so I've always had the dream I've always had the dream of going to, the, to America to to college and have a college experience mm -hmm. especially because in, in America it's much easier to combine dreaming and school or sports in general in school mm -hmm. but then yeah so i committed so I, I i had to go like one year before the olympics and uh -huh. then the olympics came and all of the, all of a sudden so suddenly i won a medal so it wasn't really expected and it changed a little bit my maybe my perspectives and my goals for the future but mm -hmm. yeah so i tried to go to to america and you know the first two weeks it's like wow completely different uh, environment for us so europeans it's very cool stuff and and yeah but then after two weeks three weeks i'd say i started thinking about it and say so yeah I, it wasn't my place so in that time so i was in in the right place in the in the right time and mm. uh, yeah so in in switzerland i have everything so my coaches my team friends family and it didn't make sense to change in after such a huge change because right. maybe i'm not the yeah best streamer in the world yet or so but so the medal in switzerland was a pretty big big thing mm, i'd yeah. say and um, yeah so it was the mine and jeremy the plunged medals were the first two medals and and respectively the second and third in swimming in switzerland after 37 years so wow yeah um, oh yeah the, yeah even in my, is, yeah. in my state canton region uh however however you want to call it uh it, it's the second summer olympic medal uh ever so people yeah it's it, it was a huge change coming back from the olympics so everybody knows me now around here and mm -hmm. so it's something that i wasn't used to and i think yeah so and yeah it didn't make sense to make another huge change in my life right no when you when you, when you talk about it was a surprise right and and then you tell me about how long it's been since you know switzerland's won a medal 27 years and it's only the second medal and this and that like was there 
was it was there a kind of a mindset of like not wanting yourself to think that big to believe that you could win a bronze medal at the olympics and then just allowing yourself to go and swim to your ability or was it truly just not a goal of yours or uh, um, a realization i guess that you could actually win that bronze medal i think anyone that goes to the olympics dreams about a medal i would say and uh you you always think about uh, about it how, how it would be or so but you never really think about it too much i th I, I think mm -hmm. and yeah i knew i swam like 51.1 back in december so uh the final was possible and then my coach always told me and always tells me that once you get in the final anything is possible you can mm -hmm. get first first to, to eighth it's it's possible maybe last year with Caleb and Milak uh, first and second places were a bit uh, so weren't easy so and maybe not possible but the third place was open to anyone I'd say mm. and yeah so I didn't really think about it I did my race as I always do and one after the semi-final I realized that I was swimming for maybe something bigger than just a final mm -hmm. because yeah, I qualified with the third time, 50.7. And I was aware that with 50.7, 50.8 or so, I could win a medal. And yeah, so but I just did what I could do, in, what I always did do in, in the final and the middle medal came. It was a bit unexpected for everybody uh i mean yeah maybe i was already already thinking about about it but not too much and yeah it came tell me this what were the what were the indications in the lead up to the olympics that you could swim 50 point in the 100 fly i mean obviously there's things in practice that tell you you're swimming you're training better than ever you're hitting paces you're doing certain sets I mean, what are the indications for you and your coach to tell you that, hey, you're on track to swim faster than you've ever swam and, and we're aiming for 50 in the 100 fly? Uh, I think that you see it so from, so in training. So the times that I, that I used to swim in training and so that I swim in training, they, they tell me how fast I can go. Then in, in, in the competition, it, it's always different because there is pressure. Mm -hmm. everybody deals with pressure there are people that deals so in a certain way people in another way but yeah so from what i was dreaming in training i think that i should should have been able to to swim 50 point already in may last year mm. uh, at europeans but then at europeans we had some problems and uh, i did too many races and i did so some people remember the two free so four by uh two fly four by two in five minutes i did both and that mm. killed me but yeah so i it didn't happen there it happened at the olympics but i was aware that i could go 50 points something but yeah you don't know when and so you right. know so you you try to to do so but i mean i think if you think about it too much if you think about the time too much then it's not so you put too, put too much too much pressure on you and it doesn't no. necessarily come we individualize training in the pool so why not individualize your nutrition erica barney of barney wellness building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans so stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net swim angelfish swim angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities swim angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism 
physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. What are, the, what are the indicators for you, Noah? What are the things that give you confidence? What are the things when your coach writes them out and then at the end of the day, you're like, wow, we achieved that. Like, Tell us some of the indicators for you that give you confidence. I mean, so I have to feel good in the water and that's the main, th main thing. It, the time, it's not always the, the, main, the main indicator. We, we started working very much uh, the past year and this year on the stroke count. And yeah, so once I do like a set and I can do always 15 strokes every, every 50 and going, I don't know, 27.5 or so. Mm. And I'm happy with that. And, but yeah, so it, every training is, is different. Every, every day is different and you feel in another way. So uh for me it's important to feel good in water and uh, to be happy with what i did in in practice because sometimes i'm gonna go very fast and sometimes it's gonna be my no uh, so that day it's, nothing's gonna go well and uh, uh, i think that those are the days where i can grow up the most because even though i don't feel good and uh and doing really bad in training so i'm not doing very well in training i need to try to do my best there and if i can do something good there uh, it means that so i'm growing i don't know if, it, if this makes sense but yeah. yeah do you need people around you or are you comfortable on your own in practice like do you do you need people to pace you do you need people to push you motivate you challenge you or do you feel more comfortable in your own space, doing your own thing in practice? So honestly, I never had a lot of people as fast as me in practice. Right, right. Uh, because maybe, yeah, it's also because we don't have really the number in, in Switzerland of so many fast people, mm -hmm. I'd say. And uh, yeah, so in aerobic, I was, if I had something next to me, and someone, not something, someone next to me, uh, I'm very happy for that because, yeah, doing, I don't know, 4K sets alone, it's it's kind of boring, I'd say. But, and there is a 1500 meter uh, swimmer that swims with me that, so I always do within the aerobic stuff. And mm -hmm. then if I go, if I have to go a bit faster, so maybe I'm going to be alone, but I know there is some next to me that is doing the same, same work. And then when we do pace 200 uh, uh, works or race pace, uh, I usually go with people that do uh, freestyle and a swim fly. And so we almost go the same at the same speed. Right. Now, do you... Um... Do you and your coach analyze your hundred where you break it up into specific pieces where like you say, okay, at the 15 meter mark, I want to be here off the start. And then at the 25, I want to be here. And then my second 25, my stroke count, my you know, coming off the wall, how many kicks do I take? How many strokes do I take on the way back? What type, you know, pace and all. Do you break it down into very small details or not? Yeah, so we start doing it with uh, Stefan Nura that just passed away the mm. past month and the past years, and we did a lot of analyzing also in training with him. And yeah, so I'm I haven't learned yet how to count my kicks any water, and that's something I need to work on because yeah, so I think it's very useful to know how many kicks I can do. So mm -hmm. I have to do, but yeah, usually I think the, in Tokyo was 18, 20, 18 in the way out, uh, 20 in the way, in the way back uh, strokes and fly. And even this year it was pretty much the same, I think. So it's always around 17, 18 and 19, uh, 20 uh, strokes uh, for the hand fly. 
and first the first honey water it's 14 meters i'd say mm -hmm. and the second 12 13 uh, meters and I, I don't count my kicks but i know pretty much where to break out mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's yeah that's it are you are you focused solely on the hundred fly now or do you have other events still that you're focusing on to be number one in the world in <laughs> i mean uh to fly uh it's my second yeah something's my first event second for something it's my second short because mm -hmm. i'm better at the two fly that on the fly but yeah i would say that 200 fly uh, it's something we're working on, working on, and uh, yeah, I still need to be to get more maybe uh, used to swim. So I, I need to swim, swim it more in competitions, mayor, uh, maybe, and yeah. So that's one of the other main events I'm working on. And the fifty fly, it's some, it's a, it's a, an event that I swim for fun because I'm not really so some. It goes well one one time out of, out of out of five maybe it goes well so I'm not a real sprinter but some, so I went twenty three zero in in Budapest in in June so I did pretty well also in the fifty fly even though I don't really train for it and mm. uh, I think on a ton of fly I'd like to get back to I am. Uh, but maybe there is time for it, maybe after Paris, uh, the 2 a.m. Uh, especially. And then we always train for the 223, especially for the relay. We could have a pretty, we can have a pretty strong relay with the Swiss guys, mm -hmm. with Antonio Djokovic going 145.3, uh, Mitikov and me, we go 146. Uh, and Liz Niels, uh, when he's in good shape, he can go 146 like, like he did last year. So that could be a very good uh, uh, relay for the future. And yeah, uh, we're, we're trying to not focus on too many uh, events uh, for Paris because I'm, I'm not Michael Phelps. I, I cannot swim. Uh, eight so five uh, in, in the individual events and uh perform well in in all of them i'd rather swim one or two events and perform well in those one or two events right uh, yeah. um who, who's your swim coach now what's his name massimo meloni okay sounds yeah. italian too yeah yeah he's from rome he was uh, luca marine's coach mm. bocciato's coach Okay. Um, some other Italians, yeah. You guys speak Italian to each other? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, nice. Now tell me, if I was to ask him something, uh, ask, if I was to ask him your strengths and your weaknesses, what would he say? What would he say about your strengths first? My strength? Yeah, what would he say? Um, maybe my... I don't know my my head so my mentality maybe mm -hmm. i'd say okay because so I, I think so then i don't know i don't like to to say what i'm good at and what i'm not good at but I why think not that I'm, why, why don't you like to I, talk about that you're obviously good yeah, at yeah. things. it's okay I, I think i think i'm i'm pretty good i'm pretty strong mentally uh -huh. and uh so i'm not a weak person i'd say and so if even if i mean so if i'm struggling with something or so i can always uh give the best and take out the the, uh, the best of me mm -hmm. and that's something i think so every streamer at a, a war a world level uh should be able to do and also dealing with pressure and that's something i'm I think I'm pretty good good at. Uh, let's make an example. The, so after so at Budapest, at Worts, I got COVID, and for one month I, I really struggled a lot. 
and mm. the first I lost 10, 10 days of training. So I didn't train for 10 days. And then I got back and after two weeks, I realized that I really wasn't making, so I, I couldn't make it. So with, uh, with my breath uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, but then we, we waited another week and then I went to see a pneumologist and we find, found out I had a problem with my, with my bronchus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like a like an asthma or so right. and i never had problems with my lungs before and then i had to do uh therapy with cortisone for a couple of days starting using ventolin until so for three weeks or so and yeah so and that was 10 days before europeans wow. and we came in rome without knowing what i could do uh, thinking that maybe so yeah it's gonna it, it, it is what it is it's gonna go how it goes and we didn't have any expectation and i went my season best in the honor fly 50.8 i got second so uh yeah i think that if i would have been weak mentally i would have wouldn't have make it uh, made it so yeah that I, makes a lot of sense I, um I, but you know the two times that you've talked about your best performances it sounds like you've had very little expectation what about um, when we uh, when we head to paris and everybody expects you now to be a medalist in paris how's that going to affect you you think uh i hope i'll have a bit more of experience in paris it's it's still two years to go right and then we, it's something we're working on uh yeah we, we're gonna see how it goes but yeah, in in Rome, not everybody knew. For example, that I had problems. A lot of people knew, but already after the the eats, so they knew uh, I could do pretty well. So it, it's something. Yeah. So, but I mean, I mean, you need to be able to react even if you're not doing well uh, physically, and that that was the case for Rome. And in Paris, it's going to be another game, another another race, and yeah. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, we cannot know what what, what will happen now, and yeah. So it's not, it's something that I have to work on for sure. And uh, like me, all the other swimmers, I think. I like that you I like that you use the word we a lot. It it, sound, it implies that you have a team of people, obviously, and that your team is going to do this together, and that it's, you're not alone. You know, I like that. I like that mentality of we because it it makes you feel stronger, uh, and it's correct. You know, like it is a we, uh, even though we're in an individual sport. If you don't have a team of people around you supporting you and believing in you, it's very very difficult to get up on the blocks alone, right? Yeah, 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 of course. So I trust in in the work that I do with my coaches, my coach and the assistant, and with my physio, my uh, osteopath, my uh, psychologist, and everyone, my family. And I, I believe in the in the process and in the work that we do. And I think that that's the so yeah, and that's why I say we and not me, and not I, because. Mm-hmm because it, it's not only me in, the, in this uh, uh, journey, uh, I would say, and we're all together and we work together and we win together and we lose together and yeah. All right. You have this uh, iconic kind of European brand on your chest, Arena. It must feel pretty cool to be sponsored by, you know, this, this like I said, this iconic swimming brand in, in Europe in Arena. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm with Team Arena since January now, and mm-hmm. it's amazing. It's like a dream come true, come true for for me mm-hmm. and maybe for the streamers as well. Because, yeah, so you, you grow up watching your idols or so uh, mm-hmm. wearing Arena or the other brands. Mm-hmm. And you say, one day I, I want to be wearing that. Um, and be, being being an ambassador ambassador so for for them and here i am and that's pretty cool it's a great great team great family also with with the other swimmers uh i love them so yeah 
Nice. Let me let me ask you another technical butterfly question because I'm interested in in your perspective here. When you're trying to swim faster in butterfly, obviously, you know, you've got to a point now where you're 50 seconds in the 100. But there, there's there's certain things that you have to do in order to get faster now. So when you're trying to swim faster, let's say in a final, you're like, okay, I've got to I got to find another three or four tenths here to get on the podium. What what do you do when you try and swim faster? Many times, so I do the mistake. Uh, maybe other swimmers do the same mistake. That I try to go on faster, or I try to to give more. So and um, yeah, like you pull too hard. I, I pull too hard, and then uh, I lose the yeah the the catch oh. and. Mm -hmm the stroke, uh, stroke, uh, stroke rate mm -hmm. and everything, maybe the stroke rate is too high after. And I think, yeah, that's, uh, if I want to go faster, I just need to, to see my, uh, how I do in, in training and in practice, it, it's easy because you, you don't, you don't have any pressures, uh, in, in during the race, it's different. And many times you, you really do the opposite that of what you should do. And yeah, if we're speaking about getting better in the on the fly, I think I can improve a lot in the second 50. Uh, I think I have the, uh, the speed, but I need to, to learn how to yeah, go, go on a bit faster and the way back to go much faster and without trying too much. Mm -hmm. um, right. And that's why I think also the 20, 20 fly can help a lot mm -hmm. because, uh, yeah, it's not a 20 speed, but yeah, endurance and then trying to swim more uh, relaxed. And right. Stuff. Right. When you start to feel it in the, in the hundred, where, where does the pain set in and what do you go to? Do you go to your catch? Do you go to your kick? Do you go to your hips? Uh, what is the thing that keeps you in your rhythm? Yeah, actually, I'm very flexible. So, mm -hmm. by fle very, I mean I'm very, very flexible, and so my hip, my hips are something that so helps me a lot, and the movement that I do, even right. though it's very, it's not so mm -hmm. wide. And yeah, I try not to lose my my legs and the movement that, that I do uh in the down part of my body uh mm -hmm. because if i lose uh power in the legs or so and uh, then instead of doing like this you go like this and right right yeah I, I lose power and lo I, I lose speed yeah and what about your head position in fly what it, especially in the hundred when you're when you're swimming fast what are you doing with your head where are you putting it I always breathe at every stroke, so okay. and that's also even in the fifties. Uh, also, uh, me, so most of of the times I breathe every stroke. I know it's not convenient for the for the fifty, but I need to figure out how to do uh, in a, in another way. And mm -hmm. I don't really move it a lot. My my head, it's always like this. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe there are people that really move, move their, they, they move their head a lot and mm -hmm. I don't really, yeah, it's always, it, so it's if, also, flat. if also, if you, if you see me swimming, it's always, yeah, flat, like this. Right. So just and, very, very flat to the surface of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you, but, do you lift your, your face all the way up or do you keep your, your face? Kind of square to the water I'll, I'll lift it all the way up like this okay so yeah. you get the full breath and then drop back down yeah. full breath yeah. drop back down okay yeah. is there is there is there a particular reason why you're breathing every stroke are you trying to get oxygen or is it just a natural way that you swim i think that's the natural way that i swim being very flat on the on the water mm -hmm. uh, i think i don't really need to breathe every two stroke to Mm. Uh, try to be more flat on the water, and mm -hmm. that's that's why I breathe every stroke. I think, and yeah, if I 
breathe every two strokes or so, my I get I get stuck in my in my shoulders and, and right. I don't really yeah like it. Okay, I'll and I'm not so good at, at it. I think. Yeah. So are you on a little break now? I am. Yeah. So after Europeans, I'm taking a three weeks break almost or something. And yeah, I a very much needed break before starting the season because last season was pretty long. And uh, yeah, so th this is going to be, we're going to have break this year. Then next year, a little bit of break in summer, then no break until the Olympics. So uh, I think I, I need to recharge my, the battery physically, maybe yes, but, but more uh, mentally than physically. Right. Yeah. I need that mental break. Yeah. So you said you feel most comfortable in Italian, right? Yeah. Okay. So in Italian, tell us over the next few weeks, what are some of the things you're going to do in your break? Tell us in Italian. Allora, <laughs> Uh, tra un paio di giorni partirò per Londra uh, per quattro giorni con un, con un mio amico e poi niente torno qua a casa uh, avrò un, un evento con Omega Zurigo alla, alle finali di Diamond League e poi ancora un paio di giorni a casa uh, festa del, del club e poi niente uh, si rinizia e partirò direttamente per un campo allenamento in altura a, a San Moritz e così inizieremo la stagione. Oh, you're going to go to San Moritz? Yeah, 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 for altitude training. So I'm nice. starting the season there. Nice, I got that, I got that. Um, have, so, you, have you ever been there? Um, I don't think I've ever been there. I've, I've heard about that place a lot, but uh, I don't think yeah, I've yeah. ever been there, no. Yeah, it's Beautiful. pretty yeah um tell me this then what's your favorite city in italy because listen i love italy i think it's um i think it's my favorite country in the whole world i tell people this rome rome for me is the city because i love history i love the the roman history um i love the people i love the food i love everything about rome for me rome is number one in the world but what, what about for you in, in italy what's your favorite city mine in italy so there are all cities are beautiful in Italy, right. but my favorite one is Venice. Venice, okay. Yeah, I've never been yeah, to Venice. Yeah, the water, it's, I mean, it's unique in the world. Yeah. Uh, you, you cannot find such a city in, in right. the whole world. Be it on water, uh, yeah. There are no cars around, only, only boats or gondole, or yeah, you walk. What about your favorite Italian meal? What's what's your favorite? Because Italian is my favorite food as well. I don't know. I, I'm, I've got this thing with, with Italy. What's your favorite food? Pasta. All kind of pasta, pasta but ca pasta yeah. carbonara. I think yeah. that's, that's that could be. And um, Naples pizza. So pizza. Right, uh, yeah. Like they do yeah. in Naples. And, uh, yeah, like those the, are my the creamy favorite. pasta, yeah. Okay, sweet. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Well, listen, it's been good to get to know you and uh, get into your mind a little bit, into your training, um, into your incredible results. Uh, how old are you now? I'm 21. 21. Still, still young, man. A lot of time left in you. Um, you're gonna be, you're gonna be one of the best in the world for many years to come. So it's very exciting. Uh, congratulations so far on your career, and um, you. looking forward to watching you in the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for thank you for having me. All right. Nice to meet you. Take care, Noah. Destro Swim Towers. Gain strength in the water with a tower of power. Save $150 per double swim tower by using code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout. DestroMachines.com. Vasa has been the go-to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmer's catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to vasatrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout and get 10% off anything from Vasa.